We welcome to Twyatt, Ori, Ori Eisen. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Ori, can you tell pleasure the folks to... at home a little bit about you and Trusona? Yes, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Trusona was founded on a very simple premise. If you all have seen the cartoon with the two dogs, one telling the other on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. Uh, we've founded a company that in the cases that you absolutely need to know who's on the other end, you need to know the true persona and you'll have a true sona. Uh, we truly believe that the internet has to be anonymous for a few use cases. But uh, if you wanted to uh, pay your taxes, if you wanted to move $10 million from your bank, if you wanted to vote, uh, we absolutely need to know who's on the, uh, the on the other hand, so there's no manipulations and no fraud happening. Right. So, so some of Trusona's clients are banks and brokerage accounts. For those of you who don't know, banks are known for using an old SWIFT network uh, formed in 1974 as a messaging network to quickly send and receive secured info, um, standing for the Society for Worldwide Banks. But Ori, can you give a little bit about what? who uses SWIFT and how it's being used? Yes, so SWIFT uh, has a network of about 11,000 banks around the world. And because that network kind of predates the internet, most of its security was really based on the fact that if you have a connectivity to that network, you must be uh, the organization. So if, uh, let's just say, uh, Bank of America is connected to SWIFT, they have a point-to-point -point connection, you assume that all transmissions on that line really are coming from Bank of America. That, for the most part, held true until all these systems also were connected to the internet. And you probably all know that last year, we had at least a famous case of $81 million disappearing because somebody took over one of those links and sent a fake transaction. I believe that the true nature of how much money was lost or what's going on is not really in the media, but those are the kind of transactions that we worry about because we know where the money goes when uh, the money is lost. Right, so, so in, in, you know, kind of going back to that breach, you know, how, how are these how are these breaches happening? And so, what 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 about Swift leaves it open for attack in that case? So I think SWIFT on its own is perfectly safe if you uh, hold the premise that if you could connect to that network and all the P2P connectivity uh, that had to go through it holds water, then yeah, I think it's pretty safe. But when those computers are also connected to your general network, and if somebody already infiltrated those or the admins that access the machines that Swift is connected to, now you have reason to think that I can plant malware or just do fake transactions through the same link that the bank has with Swift, but no one would be the wiser because I don't believe they would authenticate every single transaction. They would just authenticate the link itself. So once you could puppeteer the link, you can infuse any transaction you choose and the money will just move as it has. Right. So I think, you know, um, just recently, they've tried to bring out these new standards called CSP. Um, and I don't know, are, are you familiar with these at all? I, I don't know, can this make things better? Look, at the state of the union today, everything will make things better. But I don't think the question is anymore that by incrementing our security, are we doing the job? I believe we're now at a point where so much is residing that is connected to the internet. Take, for example, the grid in Vermont, right? If somebody can shut it down, is it okay that we just kind of incrementally improved it? Or we need to really, really solve the issue of not knowing who's on the other end? We're of the opinion, just because we've seen the security industry for so long, that incrementing or evolution is really not what the doctor ordered. We need revolution here and to really get the net to the next level that has the security that it needs and not the security that we're fearing to deploy because consumers might not like it. Some things, the consumer, if you want to see movie showtimes, you need no security. Just go search, you'll see it. But if you need to access something that is serious, like critical infrastructure, water, electricity, nuclear, something like that, we better know who's on the other end because otherwise you'll have you know, nefarious uh, forces in the world tinkering with it. Right, right. So, you know, we, we, we gander at that stolen money from breaches isn't used to what we call buy gifts for grandma. So where, where does it go? Like how, how is fraud kind of affecting us all? 
again, little known fact is that the money that gets lost usually ends up in five different places. The first is in just gangs that use it for extortion, um, all kinds of weapon smuggling. It, it could end up as terrorism. And the other side of it ends up with uh, child pornography or child exploitation that funds the activities of groups that that's what they do for a living. Uh, if you haven't been on the dark net and have seen the bulletin boards of what is for sale, I'd highly suggest that you take a VM off your home computer or your work computer, go explore that so you can see there are complete websites out there that would offer murder for money. And there's groups that are funded by doing so. So every time we see $81 million getting lost, it is getting lost to gangs that will not use it for good. So as security practitioners, as a security industry, we want to see ourselves as helping shape a future where we don't allow that to happen because it's happening on our watch.